Now, ladies and gentlemen, um, we've got something that is very important. I mean, um, we've got a debate uh, which, which I think everybody, everybody who is here is going to enjoy. It's a very uh, important debate in the sense that it's, uh, it involves the people who are in the industry, people who have been doing it for many years. Uh, DDS just introduced some of them, but uh, the whole idea is uh, I want to begin by introducing these people. I want to be asking them what they do so that everybody who is here actually know who they are. Because that's actually one of the problems that maybe they face, that they are doing f films out there, you know. They are making really great films or they are in the entertainment business or in the media business, but nobody knows them just because they are not recognized. <laughs> the debate is going to focus on the problems uh, that these people face in the entertainment and film industry. Um, it's been suggested that uh, collaboration um, is one of, uh, one of the issues that can be used in order to, you know, to rectify some of the problems that they, they face. And we're going to be asking these people to see if it's true or not. I'm going to begin with Michelle. <laughs> um, Michelle, my first question to you. You've been doing, you have done anti-apartheid movies. Uh, you have done it, you have seen it. Um, can, you, can you tell us, I mean, uh, do you think uh, collaboration is important in making movies? Well, I think the collaboration comes through working with people who are passionate about what you do. And I don't think it comes from uh, the mainstream um, organizations. I think it comes from the people on the ground. People who really want to just get down and, and make movies and be involved in any which way they can. And um, I think that um, because mainstream reject the little man, we have to do it for ourselves. And we can't wait, we can't hold out for the funding, we can't hold out for committees to uh, decide whether we can have a little bit of money or not. We just have to get a whole group of people together who is as passionate as we are about making movies. And in that way, collaboration is really important. Thank you very much. Jean, how do you react to that? I, of course, I do agree. I mean, movie making is collaboration. The, I don't know any movie maker who makes a movie on his own. Maybe there is one in the world, but it's all about uh, collaboration. And I just had the experience of um, shooting a feature film in Uganda and South Africa. And we uh, really um, have a very mixed crew. And it's about exactly what you said. It's about passion and uh, about... Uh, uh, I mean, you learn a lot if you collaborate. That's <clears throat> what I experienced. You learn a lot about... Uh, uh, how other people from other cultures work, um, the improvisational talents of um, the Ugandan crew was amazing. Mm -hmm. I mean, we are we like to prepare things in advance as much as possible with schedules and having every, everything organized. But that doesn't work in another country. And the first lesson after three days I realized we have to adapt to the culture and the situation in Uganda. And they work in a different way. Uh, but uh, one thing is the same. At the moment, when you start shooting, mm -hmm. on the set, everything is there. Everything you wanted, plus a little bit extra. And they get it on their uh, way of doing it. And um, I mean, that's, uh, that was a wonderful, uh, wonderful experience. Okay. Thanks very much. Now, Anthony, we have just, laid, we, we have just launched here uh, Black 3 Television Europe. Uh, my question to you is, see, this is called Black 3 Television. Um, do you think this being called Black, um, I mean, some people who might be white or who might be non-black might actually see it as uh, a stumbling block? How, I, how, do you, how can you call you know, these people into Black 3? Because they might see, like I, I know in America you have Black for everything. You know, you have Black, Black Association of Journalists. But in Europe, normally it's not like that. But how can you bring the people who are non-black into this Black 3 television? First of all, I think that's an excellent question. You know, and um, 
it does get asked often, and I think that initially when people take a look at Black Tree as a company, um, there's a lot of intrigue for that purpose always, you know, from whoever. But I think that when you take a look at the actual content and what's being put out there, it's really not only, it's, it's, a, it's, it's a two pronged attack, if you will. So you're going to view it in one of two ways. You're going to come with a perspective that is going to be predominantly black and it's going to display and showcase um, a black point of view. Well, you're right on that front because it's coming from things that I'm doing and my business partners who happen to be black are doing also. Mm -hmm. But when you do come in and you see the quality of the content, it's not something that, it's, it really is something that's um, inclusive. Right. People who view the content may come in with one ideology, but then leave seeing what the content actually is and how it does bring all cultures together because I'm not just going out through my company and saying, hey look at what black people are doing. In one way, yes, but then look at the production, look at the quality of the interviews, look at what's actually being done, and the collaboration issue, which is a great question as well. The same way, we collaborate with anyone who's willing to work and who has passion for making sure that their voice is heard, however it is that they want their voice to be heard. And I think that the people will react to that and have their own internal dialogue, which makes it really compelling. Okay. So in that case, you see Black 3 as uh, bridging the gap in Europe? Absolutely. 